is approval of the agenda. I would entertain a motion to approve the agenda. So, so moved. Move. Yeah. Second. It's a motion and a second. Um, any discussions, changes? All those in favor, signify aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Item four is citizens' comments. Yeah, that's next. Or we just three citizens. No, I'm second. Okay. Um, I guess I forgot to put on their approval. Oh, there it is. Approval of minutes. Okay. Um, item five is public announcements. There are no announcements. Item six is approval of the minutes from January 4th, 2016 meeting. Um, I would entertain a motion to approve those minutes as presented. The motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor, signify by aye. 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 All opposed? Motion carries. Item seven is general park updates. Updates. Um, park staff. I don't have anything. Okay. Item eight is old business. Um, park system blueprint master plan. Continue to discuss and take action on park development chart. Um, item one is an <clears throat> What I've put on here is for a discussion about uh, a, a possible trail from the library to the park and how this came about. I was, I'm a member of the uh, Friends of the Library. I was at their last meeting and they had the uh, Williamson County Library, I think he's the president. He was there and the other library folks uh, that belong. And the discussion came up about how great it would be to have a trail that goes from the library to the to the um, park, how the park and library can interact with families, kids, and it really registered with me. I thought that would be a great idea, and it can't. I can't see that it would cost an enormous amount of money. So I put it on the agenda to open up for discussion tonight to see <clears throat> what your thoughts are, whether we should pursue that. To, to come up with a recommendation to the Board of Commissioners. Um, uh, the Friends of the Library are on board with that. Um, I've asked and <clears throat> brought this up to the Friends of Bowie Park, and with the exception of the, uh, the response was that they did have quite a few projects that they were working on, and as far as supplying personnel uh, to help, let's say, on a trail, um, that would have to be determined when and if it's done. So, but basically, they didn't, <clears throat> they didn't give negatives. So um, I'd, I'd open it up for discussion right now on what your feelings are and, and should we proceed with this? Uh, would it involve uh, hiring somebody to cut the trail or, or would it be done in-house? Our staff, the volunteers? Well, I guess Brian could answer some of that how complicated that would be um it, it just de depended on how much uh i guess how much money was available um we we could probably do it i mean i haven't looked walked that back there to see you know how thick it is in the path where you might be looking at so um it's pretty thick i've walked it, and I know a lot of that area back there is. So it's just a matter, I mean, we don't have a lot of the equipment or machines to just clear cut a trail, but um, I mean, we could do a lot of the work if there was time to do it. So it'd just be kind of working out some of those details. Could you supervise uh, volunteers to help? Uh, yeah, I think so. Uh, it's it's more, it's, it's more than lack of equipment. Um, it's gonna be more contracting or renting the equipment. Um, what kind of equipment would be? Just involved? bigger, big, I mean, we don't have any kind of, all we have is chainsaws to work with. So you're talking about, you gotta grind the stumps, you're gonna have to clear all that out. It's gonna be, uh, it's something that we could definitely do if we just had the resources to do it. So it just, to me, it'd be more walking a path, marking where it seemed like it got a little thinner because the thinner it is, it's gonna be the easiest. And then, um, and then go in there and look at the path and see what it would take, you know? I, know I, don't, I, I don't think, I mean, about how long a distance are you talking? I, I, I'm not quite sure. Like I said, this is kind of a, a 
just bring it up for discussion? Is it something that we can move forward with? I think there's a, a piece that I, I can't quote everything for 100%, um, but Debbie Rainey was telling me about, I think it's Debbie, a grant that you could read. Um, it's kind of incorporating the process of, you know, teaching kids as like a learning trail. Um, and then we could possibly, um, if I could figure out if it was Debbie, there's somebody that I had this conversation with, um, and then we could probably link the two and get grant money, and by just m making signs, and for, it's more like a, a teaching process for you know families, and so they read as they go along. So that might be an option um, to look at, and I think linking it to the library was would be huge. Um, I just need to, my poor mind. Keith I think could mention definitely. having some knowledge of a, a past grant that they had gone after and some, for whatever reason if they didn't get her, it fell through it or was whatever the, the case was, but at some point it's been addressed in the past. Melissa Bale this, had addressed it several years ago. Okay, yeah. this is a totally, I mean, it's just, in the last year she told me about La, it. Yeah, last year, last year, well, who was it from the high school that came to the Friends and they were gonna get the grant for that? <laughs> Um, storybook trail. Yeah, that's. Yeah, that was the. Uh, Toyota. Toyota family. That? Toyota family. Toyota family. Yeah. I mean, was not selected, so. Right. But it doesn't mean we can't get support from other companies or, or businesses in the area too. But um, uh, I, I attended a Greenways and Trail forum. And uh, one of the things we went out in the field and they were showing us things along the river and entrances onto the river and paths. And, and they were saying how they, they, they took us on a couple of paths where they had Boy Scouts and like friends groups and, and they all pitched in and did this <clears throat> and they could, they could take ownership in it. And I, I just think it's a great thing. Now the Bowie Master Plan does not address a trail from um, the library to, to the park, but the, um, I believe when they talked about the, the trail from City Hall, the Greenway, that, that it was um, talked about in there, but that was so expensive to do that. that would do, I guess my question on this is, this is a new trail, and there's a certain understanding that these new trails may have to be ADA accessible if we put in a new trail. Is that... That's my understanding. Yeah, so, I think so too. So if it's an ADA trail, then all of a sudden it just got to be an expensive trail. Yeah. There's a few products we've looked at that are more, more natural, less invasive, but we haven't tried any of them. We haven't done an extensive research on any of them. But something would have to be done other than just a dirt floor like we have on the other ones. But I, it, it, and I'm not quite through that. And that being said, I go to the new little place that Franklin's got up here on Natchez Trace. They have no ADA. None of their trails are ADA except for just a little distance there. And all it is, I mean, it's, it's not concrete. It's nothing. It, it's just a smooth, level trail that they've got. And that's, uh, I mean, that's a park that's opened in the last year. <coughs> uh, the, trails they, the trails they've got down there, they had. They didn't have any equipment to build them. They built them with chainsaws and mattocks. So I don't know whether Fairview, whether we have to fall under an ADA deal, or the county did. Because I can promise you, they've got just a limited amount of ADA trail. Well, if you've ever been up there, it's the side of a mountain and a holler. And <coughs> you're really not going to put, you know pavement or anything back on most of them, but they, they've got where they run back a certain way uh, that, that they call it. A <coughs> well, the county did that, so they may be able to give some information or something like are, that. Are there grants, Wayne, to um, help with ADA bringing certain <coughs> city properties and clients? <coughs> we can look into it and see if we can state? find. We can look into it and see if we can find something. Well, and I don't know, I mean, it's my understanding if a new one's built, but it, I've got that from sitting 
somewhere right. like here um, or somebody came in and talked to us or so I don't know if it just involves to that where if we're gonna build one we might as well do it because we are getting pushed in that area right. and it's gonna be required eventually and if that's where that came about um, it's an interesting um, question that you raise and um, why with Franklin just doing that okay. why would we have to make it um and, and a lot of those, i mean those are very primitive trails on a lot of that up there where are you talking about it's the uh, what's the name of it timber, timber, line. timber line if you get on that straight at the bridge and you go back toward leapers fork it's just it, it's not a mile up there is it on the trace? It's right on the trace. And in the county, not, in the county, did it? The county part. Oh, well, that's huh. probably the difference. Well, I was thinking it might have been federal because it's but, the trace. But if the county can do it, yeah. why can't? I mean, still we get back to that. This is an entity that's bigger than us that can do it. Mm -hmm. Why are we strapped? We have to have an ADA if they have figured out a way to get. It. I, and I don't mean this to get around it. I think we should have all the ADA trails we can. Right. But if they figured out a way to, to come up with a compromise, I don't know why we couldn't. That land back there, even though it's thick, it, it, it's still reasonably, I, I mean, it's not straight up and down. It sort of rolls back there a little bit. It's not a, a real hilly or it wouldn't be a strenuous walk for anybody back to there. I mean, brush, it might be a... Y'all talked about this at the library. Was it with the Friends of the Library? Yeah, it was a meeting of the Friends of the Library. Okay. Is, is there a large degree of interest in this? Oh, yeah. Do you, do you think from <coughs> children who might be using the trail? Is it right. It's just the, the, the interaction of programs between the library and the park can, can be back and forth with each other. Interaction working approach. interaction That's approach. Um, is it anything that the county and the city could work on together, maybe? Well, these are that again. This That's is the reason is to that I'm just bringing it up is to, to get these questions and flush them out, and then let's get some answers on it. And uh, but there's no sense getting into it unless everyone here agrees to go forward with it. But I, I just got excited when I when the idea came up, and uh, I guess the president of the uh, Williamson County Library lives here in Fairview, and he was excited about it. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't go as so far to say that the county would enter into that. I don't think we'd want that. Um, but uh, there's a lot of... I'll take their money. <laughs> well, we it, it <laughs> I'm talking about the 50-50, you know. Yeah. Um, it, it, but I, I we can discuss it, it. Yeah. But because, it, because it, on second thought, because it does involve the library, discussion could, could uh, be made there to find out. So, <coughs> you know, I've written down here that you know, to find out possibly the equipment needs, um, if, if grants, what grants might be available, uh, find out the ADA requirements uh, and standards that we would have to uh, adhere to. You know, a question I have is, um, if you, if you uh, do all trails, are they gonna have to be ADA or can you just furnish one that would be ADA and the rest would be natural? I, I don't know. That's a good That's question. I mean, you have out. a good it point. It seems like the ones that are existing are so grandfathered in. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Because some of these restrictions came along after some of these came after these trails was made and established. Um, even the trails that was been talked about ADA are existing trails just upgrading them. Right. From okay. something that's already flat and level where there wasn't but we didn't come at, I mean, because there's all kinds on the slope and everything. Well, and even the one that was, we had the grant for, the purpose of it was to provide around the lake an ADA trail. Um, so that was our sole intent to do it, um, was to have access. Um, so I don't know, that it, we just need to find that out and then we need to consider that's going to be something that um, is going to probably have to have a gate too, because when they close the park, you're going to have to prevent. Um, uh, we can, uh, but I'm telling you right now, it's not going to there, stop there it. Are, there are there's people that, that enter the park after the park's closed on horses. Yeah, so. I know, but at least we 
make so an attempt to right. say. Right. Tell one side of the park we're putting up a gate on you, and the other side, huh? come and go as you please, is, is kind of a. a well, then a, we shouldn't close it, you know. <laughs> I, I'm just saying that, that, that I, I can see an argument somebody yeah. oh, yeah. coming up with an argument. That, well, it, 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 you know, these are all good points. Like I said, it's. Uh, Baby steps, take it one step at a time. Well, I think the idea of integrating programs, park offers, and the programs that the library offers is a great idea. It you know, combines recreation with education, which is you know a plus plus. I like this logo right there. <laughs> and I would um, definitely be in favor of it if you find funding. Yeah, so one like this. Another thing I, I might mention is. Friends might be able to help with the grant as well. I, I went to a, a grant writing workshop back in February. I'm supposed to attend another one next week. Okay. Uh, that's, that's a possibility as well. Hey, I want to make any promises. I'm just saying. Okay. I'd like I'm to. Sorry. Did, did you have something? Well, I was just going to say with respect to the ADA requirements, I don't know what. What is an ADA trail? I mean, are we talking about concrete or asphalt? Or is that what you understand it to be, Brian? It, it's it's really it's pretty subjective. Uh, my understanding is that anything that's existing is fine. Anything that you install new needs to have ADA, but but it doesn't have to be asphalt or concrete because we were looking at some kind of a perma material. Yeah, no, a year or two ago, a couple years ago, that, that you would mix in and you end up just tilling it into the dirt and then it hardens after a while. And of course, we never got any of it and tried any of it, but that would would have qualified for ADA. And it's a more natural, you know, you're not actually pouring a concrete sidewalk mm -hmm. or anything like that. So, And I know there's several options like that out there. I'm just not familiar. We haven't used any of them. But as far as I know, you know, um, Anything that we would build just in conversations over the past couple of years would have to <coughs> go in ADA. Yeah. Well, I'm certainly all for accessibility, but I mean, at the same time, I couldn't imagine that the requirements would be that stringent for a nature park because, in the way I see it, by putting in, if you had to put in so much of that, it would just affect the integrity of the park itself right. in right. terms of asphalt. I mean, I know we don't have to necessarily use asphalt, but using that as an example, asphalt, concrete, or even the, the stuff that hardens. I mean, at some point, you're, you know, it's really no longer a... Well, the, the wide spot up at Timberland line or whatever it land or whatever the name of it is, it just seems to be like a, a, a fine kind of gravel. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, you know, it, it's not... It's, uh, it's almost red clay and gravel. I mean, it, it's just where they cleared it off and got a good flat know how the soil and the land is around here pretty much when you get this much off back there in the woods you're on red clay and gravel so you can get it you can get a pretty hard surface reasonably easy like that a lot of us discuss to do with the compaction right you can use chip and seal I mean uh, crush and run gravel compact it and it will pass as ADA accessible as long as it's compacted and you can roll on it and you know they inspect it but it's really a, a several different options mm -hmm. to put something down. And the crush and run now, I, and I know there's an expense for, does the city still have a dump truck? Yes. I, I know there's an expense for the driver and the fuel to go to get the stuff. The crush and run is not that expensive by the ton if you're buying it. I, I mean, the biggest thing is the haul bill when you get it. If we was, if we was to buy, a, truckload from uh, from out here and they would deliver it would be seven eight hundred dollars but if you went out there and got the same truckload on your own it would be about a hundred dollars the biggest portion of what you get when you buy gravel is the, the haul bill the crush and run is going for 200 a truckload right now and then the two inch is a little more like three three fifty but I, I just did, I just poured some concrete and I've been going and getting it on my trailer. <laughs> and, and, a, and a ton on my trailer has been about $10 a ton. So that, that's the only reason I knew that 20 tons is, that, that's $200. So that's what you're talking about. That's right. Yeah. Well, it seems like the general consensus here is, is that uh, we want to move forward with this. Um, 
I guess the next step is is to try to pull in the information here and maybe guesstimates on the prices. Um, I'll certainly check into the ADA aspect of it. It probably probably the best thing to do to start would be to map out the most direct path of where the path would be, and then get the land trust involved and find right. out. Yeah, their thoughts and concerns. I don't think the land trust, and I'm a big advocate of the land trust, but this is sort of the area that they're not going to give us much of a ruling on because this is what they consider the developed area, and they really have in history now. I'm ha I think we should call them, but I think their thing is this is the developed area, and they try to keep their hands off of that. Is that something? But I like what you. Well, they yeah, like they do like it. to be involved. They want to be contacted on anything going on. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, when you check on the ADA, check and see if they require it to be surveyed and engineered. Surveyed and engineered? Yes, sir. Which I'm sure it will. Yes, <laughs> so there went your expense. There yeah, went the expense skyrocketed by all that. Did you do this at midnight? <laughs> <laughs> It'll have to be because one part of ADA is, is the slope. It can't, can't reach a certain grade or it's too steep. Well, the, again, to put it back into perspective, as, as a recommend, recommend, making recommendations to the Board of Commissioners, this way we can pull prices together approximately like um, Brian indicated where the path would go. So when the recommendation goes to the Board of Commissioners, the dollar amount's there and what, it, what it's going to entail. So um, I'm kind of excited about it, and, uh, and it seems like everyone else. Um, is, is on board with that. It's going to impact a lot of a lot of kids, I think. And I think it's a great thing for the city. Um, and I know the, the parks got some natural, but there was one gentleman that was in the friend, I can't remember his name, that we wanted to do, a, like, go through and identify trees and make, like, a tree walk or something. I can't, you guys, what was his name? Uh, I, I can't remember. He, he came. He came so friends. So, um, Brian, can you help us out with the determining the path? Maybe um, your recommendations. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think and, probably several people might want to get together and okay. walk out there and kind of get a consensus of what. Right. You know, we can look at the most direct path and then look at the the thickness out there and then decide. Okay. And once we can kind of get an idea, and then you can. You know, mark it on a on a map. You know, with uh, GPS or, or Google Earth or something. Then we have exactly the location, and then that's when you want to just pass it through the land trust, and then we start looking at cost per foot to get it cleared out. And what the you, equipment needed. Are you talking about like an out and back trail or, or a, like a loop? You know, that loops back around. I think it would loop would be kind of a cool thing. You could kind of call it if you if you want to go with the learning thing, the learning loop, <laughs> maybe. I'm just throwing like something it. out there. <laughs> uh, you may be able to, to stay on flatter ground that way because then you're not trying to connect another trail and sometimes that's where you get where you have to go up and down. You may be able to find a flat spot out there where... You wouldn't have to have as long of a distance, I think, maybe if you did well, a, a if loop. if you know it's sort of flat, yeah. the engineering is not going to be near as expensive as it is if you're going up and down and they have to do, I mean, if they come back out, it's pretty flat, they can give you a pretty quick approval on it. If they have to see how much rise and fall over on a, a trail that's a half a mile or three quarters of a mile or something on, I mean, then we're, we're talking about a whole lot more. Well, Sarah, following, how would a loop trail you talking about like a circular trail? Well, I'm just talking about are you wanting something that's just like one direct path out and you walk back the same way that you go out or do you want to sort of start and loop around and come back to the same spot I don't know the only reason I'm saying that is because I don't Brian can help me with this I've walked the perimeter but if you walk the perimeter you can see the back of food line from the perimeter trail so how much distance is there between the back of the library and where the power lines start it, I mean it's really not I wish we had it's not a whole. I mean, it's not a lot of land between the back and and the and the power lines, is there? No, but even 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 in cooperating with the have something with the library, even if you had a, a, a circle out here that you left went around the circle and came back to the library, you're still in Bowie Park. Sure. Without connecting into the other trail, that might keep you from having to put a gate so they're not actually coming. 
even if somebody's at the library and wanted to walk that little trail in the evening, they're still pretty much staying, you know, mm -hmm. uh, out of the park. I mean, they may be in the edge of the park. Well, that's something we can look into yeah. both ways. Because um, we're not making any decisions tonight. It's just uh, information gathering and yeah. try to move forward to the next step. And we can make a primitive trail for the naturalist to walk over. <laughs> <laughs> And then uh, you were going to look into the Friends grants, or, or at least? Well, we've been discussing, having discussions about yeah. the possibility of obtaining right. grants, and I have attended one workshop, and I'm okay. scheduled to attend another. But uh, the database that we have to access, it costs a lot of money oh. to, to get access to it. Okay. So, I don't know. It's kind of up in the air. At this point. Okay. But, yeah, it's something we're pursuing. Okay, so I guess we'll move forward um, to the next step, and then in the next meeting we can pull in some uh, additional information here and see if it's going to be feasible to go to the third step. It's a great thing. So. Um, item 9 on the agenda is uh, new business. Uh, 9.1 is the Bowie Park sign on the I-40. And Mr. Hall. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I asked this to be put on the agenda, and Richard, you're probably going to have to research your minutes for us. Uh, what I'm trying to find out, I know Mark Dietzel was the first one citizen that paid for the first bill on the Bowie Park signs on, out on the interstate. I-40, uh, and I think there's one on 840 now. Uh, Tom paid one bill last uh, the end of March. Uh, do you remember how it was set up, how we were supposed to pay that, whether it was supposed to be out of the park fund or whether it was a board voted on that to be paid uh, out of the general fund? Or, or I don't remember. I mean, I can go back and look at look through the minutes. Okay. If you could do that and have it for us, at the, uh, you might go ahead and email me and, and, and just to give right. me that information. Can you say it was brought up by Mark Dietz? Uh, he's the one, if what I understand, uh, actually paid the, the very first bill for okay. it. Yeah, I and, sort of uh, vaguely remember that, yeah. so that kind of gives me a time frame. This is just the maintenance bill yeah. for ha keeping up. To keep the sign up. Keep the, the sign up, yes. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Hold, yeah. hold that thought a second. Al, you had something to add? Back when they put in that sign, Mark Dees paid for it. At that time, Mr. Hyatt was the city manager, and he suggested, I don't know if the motion was passed or not, that $500 some odd for yearly maintenance should come out of the public relations fund or out of the general fund for public relations or whatever. Not out of the park fund. Not out of the park fund. Okay. Uh, no, yeah, he's right. That, mm -hmm. Now, granted, I don't know what's in your public relations fund. Budget, but, yeah. Um, budget. Um, I, I do remember Mark very generously offering uh, to yes. pay for it. Well, what it's boiled down to now is it's not 500 it's 1150 dollars so that brought on more talk. Now, is and that I think that's for both both signs. Now, yes. When Mark started, it was for the, it was the 840. Yeah. yeah. So now yeah. we've got two different. Yes, sir. So the fact that it seems like it's a little more than double, yeah. it may be just two different things that had one up there. Okay. Well, this will help Tom out so he'll know where to, what line item to put it under, so. Uh, I'm, thank you, Al, for letting me know that. I appreciate so. it. That's all I had on it, uh, was to clarify the. Thank you, Mr. Hall. The start of it. Thank I you. I thought you all were going to be the, uh, a new million dollars. <laughs> 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 yeah, I forgot to put on there that it was I 40. <laughs> Rod, Rod didn't clarify it. <laughs> uh, it could lead into that. <laughs> uh, okay, item 9.2 is election of park commission officers. Um, I've been chairman for two years, and I think it's time to, to step down and let someone else. I think I plowed some ground here, and, and now it's for someone else to pick it up and move, and move it forward. So. Uh, what I'd like to do is make a motion to defer this to the next meeting since we have two of the members out tonight, and they're two of the members that are newest on the board yeah and well let me just add something to that Tanisha because I had talked to Brandon Butler about it since he's the vice chairman and 
he, he did say to me that he wasn't going to be able to be uh, at the meeting tonight. And, but he's, and I had asked him about if he had an interest in taking over as chairman, and he said, I do believe I would be able to take on the chairman position if I was nominated and voted on. So, you step right into that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon's a good guy. He's, he's very, very good at what he does. And, um, I'll nominate Brandon Butler as chair. I second. <laughs> <laughs> any any further discussion? Uh, if not, all in favor of Brandon Butler being the chairman of the Park Commission, signify by aye. 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 Any opposed? No. Now can we defer vice chairman? <laughs> <laughs> well, let's go ahead and do secretary, and then we'll defer. <laughs> okay, we'll we'll go to item C, the secretary. I nominate Richard Edmonds. Hi, Richard. I second that. <laughs> Richard, you do a great job. I really appreciate what you've done and how you write things up. and really do. So uh, there's a motion and a second. Uh, any questions? All in favor? Signify by aye. 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 Opposed? Nay? No. <laughs> <laughs> motion carries. Now the vice chairman. I, I move to defer that. Okay, can we do that? I don't know why we couldn't. Or it looks like we're nominating people that aren't here. So. <laughs> well, I, I did have an email for the one. So, <laughs> all right. As long as every everyone's in one Jim? accord. Yeah. Well, we will have a, we will have a chairman. You know that yeah. will be that day. Right. Yeah. Okay. And you may maybe by then I might consider it. But okay. I'd really consider it with everybody here. I would entertain a motion to, to defer the um, vice chairman choice until the June 29th meeting, I believe it is. So moved. 27. Second. Got a first and a second. Any questions? All in favor, signify by aye. 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 All opposed? And motion carries. Uh, item 10 is next meeting is June 27th. At 7 p.m. Now, June 27th was picked because of the 4th of July weekend, so we bumped it up a week before that. Uh, item 11, Park Commissioner comments. Commissioner Crutcher? None tonight. Oh, by the way, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Mayor? Nothing tonight. Just been the meeting in my calendar. Richard? Jim? Oh, there is one thing, and somebody asked me. Uh, when, what, the MTMC of the Meet the Power Rides, is there any kind of schedule on that? Them you know, putting the native grass and flowers. Up. Yeah, I was drove by there today, believe it or not. Uh, let me, uh, I know the guy to call him about that. Let me call and find okay. out. Somebody had asked me about that, when it was going to get done, and I told him I didn't know. I, I know one thing on the property I work on. We've been preparing ground to do this for about two weeks, so it is time to be making the preparations. And Have you looked at it lately yourself? I Does drove it by look there. like it's decayed enough? No. Yeah, it's not. It, 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 you could you could spray it and work it up, and, and basically, that we have to do that because the fescue and things are just such you can't get rid of them by just it, it'll just keep coming back, and usually they, they come in and kill everything on that spot and then put then the native grasses are not competing with the invasives. They never finished grading it out. No, it's got to be desecrated. Yeah, sure. So, so, still so, so I, I guess the question was, it seems like it was, they've been done with their work for a while. Yeah. They did get back with the city and say they were waiting till this spring to do something, yeah. but we haven't heard back and haven't seen them. So Probably they did. I think it was back in the fall they made contact to say, yeah, they're going to wait. And actually, it was in the summer after it had got too deep into the summer. And they said, we're going to wait and let the spring roll around. Well, because the grass is there, the fish is what they call a cold weather grass. Yes. And, uh, the grass is there, they're going to be planted as warm weather grasses. And typically, you try to plant them in the spring as opposed to the fish you would plant that in the fall. Anything else, Jim? No, that, that just. Okay. That, I don't have anything, so it, uh, we've fulfilled the agenda, so I uh, will adjourn the meeting. Thank you. You want to give the uh, public a chance? That was the beginning. Oh.
removed it to the beginning. Moved it up to the beginning. Yeah, because it, right. yeah, right. it, it conforms yeah, with all the...